Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd talk about Hero Hammer. Uh, you know, the pros and cons of list building in that way, and even, you know, uh, whether AOS really is designed that way or, 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 you know, sort of pushes you towards that direction, you know, the pros and cons of that, and maybe go into some of the you know, some of the comparisons between, let's say, fantasy and the older style of gameplay compared to the new, as I'm a, you know, an old school player and I've come from that, that generation and into AOS, uh, just to give that kind of perspective and have a little discussion on, on, you know, whether that's, you know, the, the sort of hero style list building is, you know, where you have the, the max hero min battle line type of thing, whether that's um, positive, negative, you know, what are the benefits of that? Um, you know, is it even fun? All of that kind of stuff. So we'll go into that a little bit. And I thought what better way to do that than um, while, we, while we're talking about it is painting the granddaddy of death, Nagash himself, which, you know, this guy has a really uh, special place in my heart. Um, you know, I was around for the original, uh, you know, clown model back in the day and um, it's great now to finally have an updated version that um, I can paint up and you know I'm really looking forward to it so I'll be doing it in my classic uh, color scheme all the links to the, the, those other videos that are on that color scheme are in the description but basically it's a blue green blend on the on the cape here we're doing a limited palette idea black armor you know some nice uh, color work into the into the flesh um, and color glazing on the brass and so on but it's gonna be really cool I can't wait to get into it so I guess uh, we should get started eh? So what are we really talking about when we're talking about Hero Hammer? Well, what I mean by that is that list building idea where you're maximizing your hero slots uh, and you have your minimum battle line uh, for your troops and so on. And you might have, you know, some choice elite units, uh, but mostly your your biggest points, I guess, drop is on is on those heroes. And often uh, it'll be a very large hero, you know, something that's uh, quite powerful, uh, just like Nagash that I'm painting right now, you know, a, a god monster, something like that. You know, these like these miniatures that are in the game that are both a hero and a monster at the same time that have all of these different kinds of abilities and I guess you know this hero hammer idea may not be so relevant for let's say previous editions of AOS but the current one that we're in the third edition that we're in seems to push you towards this type of idea due to a lot of core rules that interact with them very well. You know, it's very efficient to have both a hero and a monster together in one piece, um, especially for if you're playing competitive games, you know, currently. But, um, you know, that may not always be the case. They may change things up. Different general's handbooks may have different rules, so on and so forth. But generally speaking, this type of approach where you've basically got about, you know, more than a quarter, let's say, of your points, something like between 600 and 1200 points is sort of spent on, on these sort of more hero or hero monster or large, you know, unique character models. Uh, and then the rest is, you know, very minimum uh, sort of expenditure, or like, you know, small minimum size units, that sort of thing. Now, this does change up a little bit depending on the faction, but ultimately you are investing a lot into that, in, into those hero characters. And so what does that really look like? Well, generally speaking, AOS is, you know, higher points values compared to, let's say, if we, if we compare, let's say, to Warhammer Fantasy, the points values are a lot, a lot larger. So you're not having as much on the table. And so it's a smaller grouping of models. Generally, you know, the, the horde idea doesn't work as well. And there's a lot of reasons for this. So why would it push you towards that? Not just those interactions, but generally speaking, well, most of the special rules abilities are on the, on those hero characters. There's not as much going forward as we've seen with the, with the current, uh, army books that have been coming out they're putting less and less abilities and special sort of rules on on normal units and you'll find that the biggest the biggest sort of war scrolls uh, are the hero characters you know and often the god monsters and so on and they have a whole page of rules and and what are those rules really doing well usually these heroes are sort of not just buffing themselves, but they're usually buffing the army or, or doing some sort of utility, which is usually affecting a certain type of unit in the army. It's usually um, opening up abilities for those units. So it's, it's increasing the value of another unit, right? And I won't go too far into this because I'm assuming if you're listening to this, then you probably know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But I'll just I'll just set it up for you so we we all know what we're sort of talking about when I'm saying Hero Hammer. So, you know, you've got these these very uh, efficient character pieces which are really uh, you know 
basically leveling up everything else around them, all the other units that you have. And often you'll have, in addition to these heroes, you'll have an elite unit or some sort of special unit, which is going to be your hammer, you know, or your anvil, uh, meaning your attacking piece and your defending piece, right? And then the rest, are, which are usually your troops, are these little sort of what they call chaff units or, um, you know, basically throwaway units that are there to block incoming damage and so on, either in shooting or in combat. And that's generally the sort of the the overall makeup of most most of these factions and, and the armies that you design and and so yeah is that good or bad you know back in fantasy days um you know yes you would still have that too but because of the way the points were you would have much larger blocks of units so fantasy for those that don't know was done in a sort of more regiment style you know square base everything all packed together in, in a square or rectangle uh each unit usually on on a movement tray on a sort of square tray that you would move them on so they move together in one large block they're not split up into sort of a skirmish formation where they're all individual you have it you're moving them in, in blocks and they have like turning arcs and things like that so it's more like classic uh sort of uh um, you know, wargaming type of t type of thing, and so you just have more troops. You know, you'd have much bigger units, and so overall, a lot more to paint. So the average number of models is going up. You're having to paint maybe 80 to 100 models or more, uh, even in a non-horde type army uh, that you would call it that back in the day. You might have even up to 150 or 200 models uh, on, on, on the board, you know. So there's a bit of a different uh, sort of gap. Now, obviously, that that's obviously dependent on faction and so on. But overall, you're having to, because the points are less, you're paying, you're, you're needing more to meet that 2000 point army or, you know, whatever you're trying to play at uh, competitively at that time. And so into AOS, the same sort of thing, 2000 points, you're not having anywhere near as many models. And because of the way the rules are going, it's sort of guiding you into a more hero heavy type of list building. And, and, you know, is that fun? Is that good or bad? Well, I don't know. I'm actually like warming up to it. Like in the old days, it would be, uh, you know, you'd want all the maximum troops and very minimum sort of hero models. You would you would try to maximize your troops and have these really great units. And I know from uh, listening to others online that, you know, uh, Age of Sigmar 2, the, uh, you know, second edition was more based around these powerful units that would that would be your your really heavy hitters. But now coming into three, it's sort of a bit more towards these hero monsters and these big, these big characters. They, they become more important. And um, yeah, I don't know whether that's good or bad. I kind of like it. I'm kind of getting around to it. You know, I'm going to test out, you know, how these armies work and, and, and that sort of thing, you know, Nagash and so on. But but I don't I don't think that it's such a bad idea because really what it's trying to get you to do is it's almost like um, Age of Sigmar is kind of like a large scale uh, warband game or, or skirmish game. You know, if you really look at what you're doing, you're only going to have one unit that's your main hammer or possibly two. You have your maybe your anvil and your a couple of little other units and these and these heroes. So it's like a warband of like ten units or something or even less, six or eight. You know, it's kind of like that. And each each one of these is like a like a character or a piece that does a particular function, but it's a very limited number. And 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 obviously the board is smaller. All these types of things. So it's kind of like trying to, uh, I guess, reduce time, although we know that obviously with the rules and the way it gets bloated over time, you know, it's not really any faster uh, because of that sort of rules bloat that goes on in these games. But it does generally, from at least from a hobby point of view, it does now make it a little bit easier to actually get an army painted. And I think that's where the... The, the fun comes in is the fact that one, you're not having to lug around so many models, you're not having to paint as much, and you're getting, I guess, a little bit more value off the key pieces, the most interesting miniatures that you're going to paint, which are the heroes, they become the centerpiece, right? And so from that point of view, I actually think, you know, that, that type of hero hammer approach is quite good. And, and certainly for new players, that's where you're going to get all the fun. Those, you know, if you look at like Teclas or, ne or Nagash or any of those big characters, you know, their war scrolls are a lot of fun. There's so much stuff on them, so many things that you can do, you know, and each of the main the main factions in the game or the main alliances has one of these models that you can muck around with in almost every army or every faction. And so that's really cool. So you get a chance to sort of play around with these dynamic characters and they're going to be the most fun to paint because they're the most interesting. So it does kind of align itself well to people who are just interested in painting and want to build from that point of view and also from competitive gameplay because we know, you know, if you're looking around at the meta and so on and those that, that, that cover that, 
we see those types of lists often. That's the kind of list that we're seeing. We're not seeing uh, the sort of the more fantasy Warhammer style uh, armies. We don't see that. It's totally different in AOS. And, and so, you know, both from a competitive, high competitive standpoint and from the hobbyist and the painter standpoint, both are kind of aligned in this game, which is really interesting. It's something that's very rare. You know, that type of thing doesn't usually align itself. Usually there's dissidence between, you know, the more hobby focused person and the more competitive person, you know, traditionally from from ages past. But it feels like Age of Sigmar is a lot closer in the middle to satisfying both both camps, you know, and bringing them together in the middle because both things are true. If you're a painter, you love those character models and you want to paint them, they're also going to be really effective in a game that you play, you know, maybe a couple of times a year or whatever. So you'll get more fun out of that side of it, even if you don't do it very often. So yeah, I guess in conclusion, what, what I feel about this is that it um, it's definitely a positive, I, I, I feel, you know, the fact that I've just been, you know, painting these Stormcast over the last year that you've seen on the channel uh, and now onto these um, Soulblight Gravelords, you know, it, it does feel pretty satisfying to paint. So I can say from that point of view that it is. I'm yet to play a lot of games yet, so I want to get into that and start to get the feeling of how these kinds of lists actually feel uh, to play. But, you know, I think it will be okay. And, and, and is this healthy long term for the game? Probably not. It does need to probably change. You don't want to always have that. But I do think that having those types of lists viable is good because it does give people a way in, you know, and, and a fun, exciting way in, you know, and, and the more of that that's around, I think the better. But ultimately, obviously, from a more competitive point of view, you want to have, you know, things rotating in and out. So maybe, you know, in the next journal's handbook, it'll be more, you know, unit sort of heavy kind of lists rather than hero heavy and so on and so forth. But that's only going to really affect the most competitive players, everyone else in between can still run those hero hammer lists and those more limited numbers of models and still actually compete and have a nice time with their mates and have a competitive game uh, without it sort of feeling like a bad time or whatever, you know, uh, and, 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 that, and that's great. So I, I do think that it is a, a good direction generally that Age of Sigmar seems to go in uh, compared to, let's say, you know, uh, previous editions of Warhammer Fantasy and, and, and back in those times, because that sort of got out of hand. Uh, anyone that's been around for the length of time of fantasy, like I have, knows the sort of, you know, the imbalances and the crazy ride that, that we all went on through through fantasy. And 40k obviously has the same issues, you know, um, all the way going up to a reset and, and, and an ending of fantasy, although it's coming back in Old World, and uh, and and, uh, and uh, with Age of Sigma being the new one, and then even even 40k Eighth Edition being like a reset with a real a real big heavy change of rules and so on into a different style of play. So you know they've always, as a company, Games Workshop, you know, struggled with that and, and to keep that in line. And it is very difficult. Uh, and so, but I do feel like Age of Sigma, in particular, since what we're talking about here, does seem to have, as I said, a closer kind of synergy between the hobbyist, the painter, the person who's interested in the miniatures uh, from that point of view, the narrative uh, gamer and so on, or, you know, people who are interested in that side of things, uh, more so than the gaming side, let's say, um, is closely aligned to those that are far more interested in the gaming side because both things uh, are true, right? Both both model uh, and 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 gameplay mechanics are both cool and interesting, right? Or at least you want to hope that the majority is. This isn't always true. Obviously, every faction has their has their you know their their lemons, but um, overall, most of those those key hero uh, characters, and we're talking about things that are in you know. Usually the ones that are around that 300 point mark are pretty good. You know, most of them are, are pretty decent through most factions. The ones that are above five, six, seven hundred and above, they're all generally relatively good, although there are some exceptions. Uh, and then you have these key sort of like utility pieces at 150 points, you know, that sort of range 200 that, that can be quite good. But then you'll have you'll have more hot and cold. Not, not, not every faction has a good a good list of those. But, um, you know, there's always something in there to grab, at least from, let's say, I would say 70% of the armies that exist in Age of Sigmar. There's there's the bottom row, the bottom six that are struggling. But even within that, that's, that's other sort of structural issues generally, not necessarily to do with um, all of their hero characters and so on. It's got, it's got, it's, it's a more systemic problem for those, for those books basically just need to be rewritten, right? 
So yeah, overall, I think it is relatively positive. I'd like to know what you guys think about that. But um, yeah, I, I do think so. I might change my mind. We'll have an, a revisit of this idea down the track as the as the new General's Handbook comes into play this year and then we move to a new uh, realm or whatever it's going to be and, and the focus changes from monsters and so on and we see something else uh, come forward. Maybe those things change. The fact that they've eroded, you know, Nagash and so on, they're not quite as powerful as they used to be and there's, there's a little bit of change there. Maybe we see something different. Um, will it be more fun, less fun? Who knows? But it'll be fun to work through that and have another discussion on it maybe in another six months time. You know, once I've had a few games and we can really talk about it and I'll, I'll pick another sweet model, uh, hopefully uh, something fun to, uh, to paint for that video. So yeah, but you know, let's uh, let's close it out. We'll see how I've gone with Nagash here. It, it's a it's a long, uh, grueling process. The magic of film cuts it down to a, only a very short time. But uh, I can tell you from from uh, painting him, it's it's taken a while. But we'll take a look at how I've gone and my final thoughts. Wow, what a journey! Okay, so he's finally done, Nagash. Lord of De Lord of Death. Uh, this was an adventure, that's for sure. Just a side note: if you are planning to uh, do this one, uh, don't be a crazy man like me and um, try to paint all that bl uh, blue green blend with a brush. Uh, I wanted to challenge myself, and so here we are. Uh, it took a very long time, weeks and weeks of work, to try to get this blend. I was going for a sort of a painterly style. Um, you know, to keep all of the background elements out of focus, basically, much like the discussion we did on uh, painting composition and, you know, drawing your eye to the focal point and that sort of thing. So to keep Nagash sharper and more in focus and the other elements in a more painterly style, as you can see. Um, but even then it took a long time. So if you are going to do that, just use an airbrush on, on these blends and you'll get it done in a day rather than weeks like it's taken me. But, you know, apart from that, it was a really good challenge and I am happy that he's done. And I think Think it came up pretty cool. It looked great in an army, so I'm really happy for that. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to, uh, you know, speed up your approach where you can and, and not um, go nuts on it. But um, otherwise, yeah, it's been really fun. So I hope you've enjoyed these thoughts on, uh, I guess, Hero Hammer and, and that sort of thing. And this was a good model to sort of demonstrate that. I mean, he's a thousand points, so I'm already almost there. I've done all the other characters for the list, which you've seen on the channel, uh, you know, uh, Belladama, Radikar, and so on. Uh, and all I've got to do now is some skeletons and some diables and I have 2,000 points. So it's a really great way to just get yourself into an army and, and get it done. But yeah, you definitely want to choose uh, more appropriate methods, uh, not this kind of crazy, uh, you know, hand painting approach. It doesn't look like there's a lot of surface area here on that on that that robe and all the magic and magical elements, but there is actually a lot of surface area. So you don't want to attempt it without, uh, you know, a little bit of planning uh, that will help. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. I'll leave a good photo of him at the end with the paint list and so on. But um, yeah, please hit that like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.